The Toronto real estate market is got a lot of people saying there's going to continue to be good times. A lot of other people saying we're headed for really turbulent times. Yeah. How does Zucasa navigate what might be some very difficult times ahead? Yeah, well, I think anytime you get into a cyclical business, you know there's going to be cycles. Uh, we started, I mean, when my partners and I started now 10 years ago working together in these markets, uh, we had the benefit of, of starting at really this, the foundation of this ride that has risen through the whole Canadian marketplace. So being in real estate, being in mortgages, we've been exceptionally lucky um, to be playing in that space the last 10 years. The whole time we've been protecting our businesses against an eventual downturn. Um, I don't think anyone can predict what's going to happen, when it's going to happen. But if you look back through the last 30, 50 years, there have been cycles it's in like real that, estate. Right? It goes <laughs> like this. Um, so we, we make sure that we've got a couple things in place. One, our businesses are transactional. So whether the assets are trading high or low, we're involved in every trade. Um, Meaning uh, there's a fee associated with every trade. There's a fee with transactions. Regardless of the prices exactly. going up or down. So for us, if the prices were to go down, for example, um, usually what happens in real estate, so the actual residential real estate sales, is that there's a, a period where everybody just stops. Everyone holds their breath. No one's buying or selling. Uh, three to six months later, after a period of three to six months of no sales, uh, everybody starts moving again. So you still get married or divorced. You still, life unfortunately, happens. life happens. And when life happens, people move and we'll, we'll be there. And the nice thing during that time is the number of agents decreases. So just by staying in business, you actually gain market share. So if there were to be a significant downturn, what are the preventative steps or management steps that Zucasa has in place to survive it and I ultimately, hopefully, thrive in it? Yeah, so, so a couple steps. Uh, one is that, we, again, being transactional, uh, we will be involved when the transactions start to occur again. Um, the important thing is that we are a technology company. So we are actively just steamrolling towards creating the best tools for our users and our clients to go through the transaction process. And one of the things we did to protect ourselves was to go out and raise money. So we had bootstrapped the first, oh goodness, seven or eight years of operating with my partners. We had bootstrapped everything. Um, as every economist around the world started saying that Canadian real estate was in trouble, we started saying, well, let's make sure that we've got a little protection. Cushion. Exactly. So we did a raise to make sure that we have a cushion so that we can support our staff, uh, both on the brokerage side, but more importantly, on the tech side, so that in a period of a cyclical downturn, we are still heads down building the technology that we know is going to be important when the market goes back up. I mean, the real estate market is not seen as as high tech in any way. <laughs> no. Is no. that actually a fundamental differentiator for you, bringing new technology to the marketplace? So the biggest differentiator for us is going to be understanding the real estate process first. So most of our competitors in the real estate technology space, um, they're making a lot of noise and they're saying, we're going to fix this. And every single one of them, as far as we can tell, is trying to fix a small part. So one will do documentation and one will do appointments and one will do search. And what we see the problem in real estate technology as being is that nobody has taken it all the way from the user through to the owner. So the user clicking online, doing their search, and then the client actively buying and selling real estate all the way through to the owner managing their real estate holdings. That process needs to be on one technology base. And right now our competitors are all focusing on little bits and pieces. When you launch that, is that going to actually be transformational for your business or where do you see it or do you see it as an incremental step? We see it as an incremental step um, and the, the reason being our business is a little bit of a flytrap in that leads are the first and foremost most important thing in the real estate space. So for us, we're trying to optimize the user experience online and search so that we have a pool of of clients looking to use us for real estate transactions. And that lead flow really allows us to create a, a brokerage and a model to, to service those leads. The technology allows us to be more efficient the, the entire way through. A lot of founders don't really focus on sales like the way you do. Mm -hmm. What would you say to other founders when you think about your focus for that first seven or eight years bootstrapping, your focus mm -hmm. on generating revenue? So going back, I don't even know that when we were young and starting out, we, we realized we were doing this. Uh, but now retrospectively, you can see that you can go and knock on doors and raise money, or you can 
as trial and error and as you're building your business, have your customers help finance it. So over the years, every year that you do a million, two, three million dollars in revenue, it's effectively like going out and raising a million, two, three million dollars in in equity capital that is being and we we just spent every dollar we made, reinvested it, kept investing in people and technology to, to grow. But anybody that says they bootstrap really just means that their clients actually invested Helped in their company. the business. Exactly.